What's going on, American truckers? I hope all of you are doing great. Staying safe, staying out of trouble, being good to one another. You know, remember, we are all family. We're we are a very dysfunctional family, but as drivers, we are all family. I just wanted to kind of give an update on my experience here at Poly Trucking. But before I do that, I'll give a little disclaimer. I do not in any way represent Polly in any kind of fashion. Uh, if you have a question about Polly, call Polly. But uh, anything I state in here is just my opinion. That's all. That's all it is. It's just uh, my experience, my opinion, and what I what I go through here at Polly. Your experience may be different. Might be better. Might be worse. This is mine. There's not a whole lot of information out there on Polly, so I like to put a little bit out there as to how it's going and all that kind of stuff. No company's perfect, but I do enjoy it here at Poly Trucking. All right. And things I love, things I like, and some things I don't like. But hey, I'm happy. So far, I'm happy. The money's really good. Um, I like being able to select, select my loads and all that kind of stuff. That's been great. I enjoy that. Um been staying pretty busy i just took a week off it's been a while since i've been able to take a week off um, and i enjoyed that did, did a little bit of fishing at the house played with the drone i got a drone which by the way there's going to be some drone footage and stuff coming up now i just got a uh, sd card for it so i can start doing some of the 4k footage it's hard to run 4k footage directly to my phone it takes up a lot of space but I think it's about, what, 21, 22 gigabytes for one hour of 4K drone footage. It's quite a bit of space that, that uh, 4K will take up. But I'm going to be getting some pretty cool stuff from around the country. I started a drone channel that's just strictly drone, and I'll be posting those videos over there as well. With just music in the background is all, that, all that's going on those. It's going to be 4K drone footage from around the country. But anyway, like the title says, there are some changes coming to Poly. And I think these changes are great. In my opinion, they are. Um, I'm sure some of the drivers that currently work here are going to enjoy them when they come about. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, one of the things is the paperwork. At the present time, the way we do our paperwork, anytime we cross state lines, we have to record the mileage and all the roads that we covered while in that state i thought they were doing it for tax purposes because back in the old days that's the way it was done that's the way it was done back in the old days you know everybody had to keep track of what highways they rode and how many miles they were in each state and that's how they paid the road taxes at the end of the year you know and then it you know there's fuel involved in that and all that kind of stuff but uh here at poly i was talking to one of the one of the safety guys here and he was like no he said for the last however many years that they've been doing it uh electronically or something he said uh they just hadn't changed the paperwork he said but they're working on changing the paperwork to where we don't have to record that anymore you know it's going to be more i saw an, an example of what they look like it looks a lot like a regular trip sheet at most regular trucking companies starting Starting spot, ending spot, mileage, trip number, all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, but, and from what I understand, that's supposed to be coming out like within the next few weeks, probably within a month. And I think that is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Because I can't tell you how much of a pain in the butt it is to go, oh, I just crossed the state line. What was that mileage? You know, or you're in traffic, like you're in West Memphis. A lot of times when you cross that bridge into Arkansas or back over into Tennessee, you're in traffic. You'll look down at that mileage. By the time you get to the other side and get stopped somewhere to write it down, you done forgot. So then you're you're trying to figure out how many miles it was back to the border, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And it's it's kind of a pain in the butt. And if you miss it a couple times, oh man, you might spend an hour trying to figure out, okay, yesterday I was here, then I was there. How many miles is it from here to there? You know, it's, it, it is a royal pain in the butt. But that, my friends, is coming to an end. Fix them not have to do that no more. Something else he was talking about is that the current 
at the present time, the way our payroll works is you turn your trips in at one of the plants. <clears throat> There's cutoff dates for each of the plants. And then uh, you get paid on the, on the next Friday, right? If you meet the cutoff date. If you don't, then it goes on your next check. So, like, if you go out and you don't make it to a plant within that week, you may not get paid that week. It all rolls together, goes on your next week. Now, it makes for some big checks. You know, it might make for some three, four $4,000 checks sometimes. Sometimes more than that. But if you are the type of driver that doesn't manage your money, you get paid on Friday and you're broke on Monday, that system is kind of a pain in the butt for you. So they've done something that's going to fix. They're working on doing something that's going to fix. Uh, that's going to fix that. You know, and uh, it, it basically they're they're going to work on uh, pulling your mileage for the week and then paying you every week for the miles you drove that week. You know, and there's it kind of gets complicated. To be honest with you, I was tired whenever I was sitting and talking to him, and he was going into explaining things that were way over my head because I'm just a truck driver. That uh, electronic guru uh, stuff pulling mileage in real time is way out of my league, man. You know, I'm barely baiting a, baiting a hook, tying three knots, you know, that type of person. You know, I still sing the little song whenever I tie my shoes. <laughs> but anyway, both of those things I thought were really freaking cool. Really cool. Now, as y'all know, we run internationals and we run Peterbilts. Um, the average age of the fleet, the average age of a tractor is about five and a half years old. That's the average age. Um, and that's throughout the whole fleet. And some of those tractors that were counted, because he sat and figured it all up. I was sitting right there. And some of those tractors they don't use anymore at the present time. Or they're not being used at the present time. So the average age of tractors actually being used is probably three years old. But the average age of the entire fleet as a whole is around five and a half years old. Um, now the Internationals and the Peterbilts, they're the same from the frame end. They're running the same engines, same everything. Um, but for whatever reason, International... I know I ran a poll on my community page, and if some of y'all listening are not familiar with the community page, you can go click on, go to my profile, click on the community page, and there's all kinds of polls on there that I've uh, ran over the last few months. One of them I ran was what truck is the most reliable, and International is actually the least of the most reliable trucks, and it's true. I mean, International is a... Uh, is a cheaper cheaper line truck but we'll say this they do try to take care of their trucks here my truck currently got a pm and they're getting ahead of the ball and fixing whatever else they they want to fix on it uh been here in grand prairie for three days hopefully i will be out of here tomorrow but and it's the first time my truck's been in the shop nothing major Nothing major. PM, couple sensors, uh, mostly on the after treatment, after treatment side of it. Some sensors there. But anyway, those are some changes that are coming up in Poly. Uh, we'll say though, I am happy. I do enjoy it. Uh, it's not a regular trucking company. Um, some of the things I, you know, like if if you were to ask me, what do I not like? Well, I'm a smoker. Can't smoke on the property nowhere. If you want to smoke, you got to walk out the gate, get off the property to go smoke a cigarette. But hey, that's expected. You know, some some Polly's not the only company that's that way. And I know some of y'all out there, I have as well, delivered places where they won't let you smoke on the property. And even though I don't like it, it's kind of doing my health some some favor because I gotta I gotta balance between. Uh, if my fat butt wants to walk outside the gate or if I just want to wait a little longer for a cigarette. So I'm actually smoking less because I don't want to walk my fat butt out the gate to smoke a cigarette, right? So it's got its benefits too. You know, so, but do I, do I like it? No, no, but it is what it is. It's one of those things to be expected, which by the way, if you're coming to Polly, 
don't try to sneak a cigarette. Don't do it. Do not do it. I've heard stories of people doing it. They will not tolerate it. Um, it's a hazard. It, you know, so don't do it. Just, just don't. It's not worth it. Walk outside the gate, or if you're uh, leaving with a load, whatever, just wait till you get, get your load, get up, get on out the gate. You know, and get going down the road before you do that. And it's, it's not worth losing your job over, you know. I'd rather be a little bit cranky, walking around and pacing back and forth, drinking a Dr. Pepper every five minutes, than, uh, than, than working somewhere else, you know, whenever I really like working here. But anyway, that's my update on Polly. It's not not a whole lot to update, but I mean, there's a little bit of change there, which is great. Uh, if you currently work for Polly, you can walk in there and talk to them. They'll talk to you. That's something else I thought that was pretty awesome. You know, I came from a company that had 6,000 trucks. And although I did know the owner there where I came from, it wasn't as straightforward as just being able to walk in there and talk to them all the time you know there was so much going on when you got when you when when someone's running a company with six thousand trucks there's so much going on that they don't have time to and they ain't worried about you they got the six thousand trucks because they know what they're doing right and in their mind that's the way they see it but when you work for these companies that are a little bit smaller like here at poly i think we're running 200 trucks 250 something like that it's, it's a lot smaller fleet they want to hear from you and they're not a trucking company so they do kind of want to know hey how did it work where you came from you know uh, they can compare it you know and uh, some of these things they may actually be able to implement to make it more driver friendly um, now Keep in mind also, if you're thinking of coming to Poly, I know a lot of y'all that have worked for these regular trucking companies, you're used to, like when where I came from, we had, I think, 10 or 11 terminals, maybe 12 around the country. All of them had washers, dryers, and showers. Now, the showers were not always the cleanest because drivers are nasty. Some drivers destroy them, and they're high maintenance. Anytime you get a shower that's... Uh, that's being used by drivers it's going to be high maintenance and that's a high cost for companies and I and I get that believe me I get that I'm sure all of you out there listening do we've all walked into the bathroom at a truck stop and there's toilet paper on the walls toilet paper on the floor um, some guy who's taking a dump and couldn't even hit the toilet it's it's off over there in the corner somewhere I did that short out in California what about six months ago when I was in uh, uh, Castic I believe where the guy looked like he just exploded and it just shot all over the wall. I mean, it was the grossest thing I'd ever seen. I'm not sure if it's still up or not. I took some of my shorts down, but I made a short about that. You know, so drivers tend to be kind of hard on bathrooms. I don't know why. Drivers are just, some, some drivers are just nasty, dirty and nasty. But here at Poly, there's a restroom. Um, there's a there's a driver's lounge. You can use your company ID to get get stuff out of the vending machines and stuff like that, and they'll just take it out of your check. The stuff that's in the vending machines is a lot cheaper than if you get it somewhere else. Like uh, I normally get canned Dr. Peppers. They're forty cents out of the machine here. Um, I think the uh, like if you get a hamburger or something out of the snack machine, I think it's a dollar fifty. You know. You know, so it's a little bit cheaper, and they'll just take it out of your check. You know, those those things are pretty sweet. But I hope all of you out there are staying safe, staying out of trouble. Oh, I wanted to answer a question that uh, actually my girl had asked me last time I was home. She asked me, she said, why did you go to work for Polly whenever we have Interplast or Interplast right here? Because right by where I live is a plastics plant, Interplast. And they have their own trucks. I worked within that factory. I ran an automated warehouse called CMA. It was actually they actually bought it from the Italians, and uh, I was a technician at that time. And I ran that warehouse. I ran month of days, month of nights. I was one of the people that ran that warehouse. So I had experience out there. Plus, I had worked the lines. I had been a line supervisor at one time, you know, and. Uh, 
she asked me, she said, well, why didn't you just go to work for Anaplast? And that's a good question. And I, I don't really tell everybody what I'm doing, including my girl, you know, what I'm thinking all the time. So I didn't realize I hadn't explained it to her. My deal with coming to Polly is Polly's American owned. All right. Anaplast is owned by the Taiwanese. Or not only, I mean, it's supporting American workers either way because it's in America. But at Interplast, which is owned by Formosa, right there in the Low Leader or Point Comfort, Texas, it's right there on the line, you're limited. When I worked out there, my supervisor was Vietnamese. I was never going to get any higher than where I was at. That was it. All of the supervisors over every department were Vietnamese. Okay, all the main supervisors. So there was a ceiling. As an American, you were only going to get so far in the company, and that's a wrap. You weren't going no higher. Vietnamese ran it. All right. Here at Poly, there's former drivers in the office in some places. You know, um, I believe one of the driver supervisors here uh, was a driver at one time. But your potential here at Poly to move out of the truck, move into the office, move up through the company is on you you want to go to college and learn something you know you want you want to demonstrate uh better skills you want to learn another job you know and move your way up through a corporate structure the possibilities there you know not that most people are going to do that but if you ever wanted to the possibilities there you want to move into safety former drivers make great safety people we've been there we've done that you know but the possibility is there the opportunity is there, whereas with Interplast, that opportunity wasn't there. I Sure, I could go drive trucks for them, but I was never going to be anything else. It was never going to, I could be there 30 years. I could go to college. I could learn whatever I wanted to learn, and the opportunity would never be there for me to advance within that, within that organization, where with this company, there is opportunity to advance within this organization, and that's why I chose Poly. That's one of the reasons that I would rather work here than work there. Even though that place is five minutes from my house. This one's six hours from where I live. You know. But anyway, I hope all of you are staying safe, staying out of trouble, being good to one another. Like I said in the beginning, we are all family. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Ring that little bell so you get notified when new videos come about. I appreciate you all for stopping by and spending some time with me. You could be anywhere else in the world. But you decided to chill here with old Snapper. And I sure appreciate that. Let's keep trucking.